Who's how Rams how? You know who we rollin' with. Golden Rams Buzz Podcast. Hit like, share, and link. Who's how Rams how? You know who we rollin' with. Golden Rams Buzz Podcast. Home of the champions. Who's how Rams how? You know who we rollin' with. Golden Rams Buzz Podcast. Hit like, share, and link. Who's how Rams how? You know who we rollin' with. Golden Rams Buzz Podcast. Home of the champions. When I need a scoop on the league, I hit up the dream team. Golden Rams Buzz Podcast. Welcome to another episode of Golden Rams Buzz Podcast with Chris. Demond and Sal. Today, our guest for this Niner weekend will be Chris Pius, Niner fan. Boo! And also Jim Marid. Boo! Before we start, well, no, that's later on in the show. But yeah, Sal, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. the Rams beat the Giants 26 25. Our rookie, Pukunakua, had five receptions for 118 yards. Mm-hmm. Also, Matthew Stafford was 24 34. Mm-hmm. One TD, two interceptions. Mm-hmm. Thoughts on the game, Sal? We barely won, but a win's a win. Yeah, barely won, but uh, I mean, I think the Rams are, um, you know, they're right where they need to be right now with one game remaining. Uh, the running game, uh, Kyron's just killing it, you know. So he's pretty much leading the Ram offense. I feel comfortable. I mean, there's some things that the Rams need to clean up, but they know that. Even if you win the Super Bowl, you got to improve. So the Rams know where they're at, and um, I like what they uh, where they're at, and you know, I like the way they approach this final game and on to the playoffs. Um, the the worst thing I don't like about our team, field goal kicker, which we cut because he missed two extra yeah. points. Mm-hmm. It should have been 28-25, 26-25, the Rams win. But I believe when you have a field goal kicker that misses extra points, that messes up momentum. As you see, the Rams cut him and brought back Brick Maurer. Sal, what are we doing? Why are we bringing back the kicker that missed? The first kick we had missed against us. Come on, man. There's no yeah. field goal kickers out there? But there there, there was, and uh, Coach McVay said there was other options. But, you know, I, I think he he likes to keep, you know, the in-house guys. I think he kind of felt like Brett Maurer was their best option. You know, he's saying that he's, he put him in a lot of tough situations, 50, you know, 50-yard 50 plus field goals. So um, I actually prefer the Rams just go for a two-point conversion after every touchdown. You think so? I wouldn't leave it up to a kicker. Yeah, there's no way. Not in the playoffs. I mean – we lost one game due to field goal kicking, so yeah, you can't uh, go into the playoffs. You know, when a team is young and, and playing hard, there's no way you can leave it up to a kicker to determine whether you win or lose. So, I'm glad the Rams made the right move. Um, Pukunatua, Pukunatua is 19 yards away from the record held by Bill Gorman in 1960 from the Houston Oilers. Mm-hmm. 19 yards away. Does he get it against the Niners, Sal? Well, he gets it. Yeah, there's no way you're gonna. Um, the Rams have to let him play and have to let him, you know, cap off the season with that record. Yeah. Um, but what's crazy is, you know, he's opposite, you know, triple crown winner Cooper Cup. I mean, that's that's huge to be able to put out numbers like that with with the Rams receiving core. So, and there's another record a Rams rookie has. Describe that record, Sal, that he has. Oh, uh, Kobe Turner. Yes. Yeah. I mean, how amazing is that, right? I mean, the Rams, as far as uh, drafting, I mean, the Rams scouting too. Yes. But you know, uh, Coach McVay wasn't even uh, included in the Coach of the Year candidates. But I think that Coach McVay has done more than a lot of these coaches have. I mean, he pretty much brought in a whole new coaching staff. The Rams have 40-plus rookies and young players coming into training camp. And to bring everyone together and to, you know, qualify for the playoffs is amazing in one season. So I think that's enough. You know, you know I think he did more than some of the other coaches that you, are You know what's amazing? A couple yeah. years ago, Lesney was effed in picks and got us to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Then he had to revamp. Last year we go 5-12, and 12, injuries decimated the team. Mm-hmm. This year, nobody knew who the rookies were. Nobody had seen Puka Nakua, Kobe Turner, mm-hmm. Bryant Young. Mm-hmm. They're making they're, the offensive rookie of the year could be Puka Nakua, defensive of the year could be Kobe Turner. Isn't that a testament to how good the Rams draft and how good they come together as a team, youngsters, mm-hmm. and just getting together? And, and you see the rejuvenated the team. Aaron Donald seems mm-hmm. to be rejuvenated. Um, the coach is rejuvenated. You know, mm-hmm. everybody's just coming together as a team. I think this team is very close, and I think we're going to make a run in the playoffs. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I feel the same way. And I, I like what the Rams say. They're they're more about, you know, uh, the energy is from inside out, you know, from inside out of their locker room to the public, then the public. And, and you see that they play for each other. But the amazing thing is, is they're all coachable. They all want to get better. You know, you never hear anyone talking about no uh, individual awards or anything. You know, they're all about the team. And I think that's really important to be focused on that than individual awards. Now, start of the year, what did you say the Rams were going to do, Sal? 
I said the Rams are going to make the playoffs. And who had you said the last game was going to come down to was going to be involved in the playoffs? Yeah, Rams right? are 49ers. Yeah, and then what's going on? The Rams are. And I think the end of the season is going to be Rams and 49ers. And that's, yes. And then, ooh, the NFC Championship game, huh? Yeah, I said Rams, the NFC Championship, Rams, 49ers, and uh, um, yeah, in SoFi North. Yeah. And it's crazy because when the Rams start off three and six, Everybody talked bad about us. I had yeah. phone calls, text mm -hmm. messages, mm -hmm. Niner fans, Ram fans. Hey, Demond, it's over. Mm -hmm. We're going to take for Caleb Williams. We're going to do this. Mm -hmm. I said, no. Like you mentioned, football's a marathon, not a sprint. Because yeah. you see these teams that are sprinting out fast. Mm -hmm. Eagles, KC, certain other teams all struggling. are struggling. Yeah. The Rams are not struggling. You know no, what I'm saying? Yeah, the Rams yeah. were peaking at the right time. Mm -hmm. The last seven games are 6-1. and one. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're going in hot. I don't care. You know, we're going in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. They beat mm -hmm. us eight or nine times in the regular season in a row. But the most important game they didn't beat us in was what, Sal? NFC Championship. Oh, yeah. yeah. What game was that again? Well, that would be the NFC Championship. The escalator. Yeah. I call it the escalator game because, like, as you oh, saw, yeah, 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 yeah. Niner fans yeah. were bang, banging their asses out yeah, of the stadium. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, Do you think the escalator was put in for that purpose? Yeah, I think it so. It could have been, huh? Yeah, I think so. So it gives us a bird's eye view. I like when they show it on the, uh, yeah. on the Oculus. Huh? Yeah. They've done it a couple of times when they yeah. played the Raiders. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so but, yeah, the, the pass and everything is amazing. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So with that being said, we had into Niner Weekend. We got a Niner guest that you know real well. Everybody, let's welcome our first Niner guest, <laughs> Chris Paez. Yeah, Paez. Yeah, yeah. Joining us now, Chris Paez, mm. Mu Muay Thai and MMA fighter, okay. um, fitness director at UFC Gym, an amateur record of 16 and 7, a professional record of 5 and 1. And as you can see, he's a Niner fan. Thanks for joining us, <laughs> Chris. For yeah, definitely, definitely. Thanks My question is up. this. Yeah. What made you a Niner fan? Good question. You know, I wasn't born into, you know, the fandom, but it kind of chose me. I just I happened to turn on the TV. One of my Pop Warner coaches, you know, said, hey, go go watch some, you know, pro football, see how it's done. I turned on my first game. It was Jeff Garcia. I, I don't remember the exact game, but I just okay. fell in love with uh, the colors. Like, I'm, I'm just a very passionate guy. Mm -hmm. I read the passionate color. Okay. So I just fell in love with the team, and, you know, I'm very loyal. So that's the first team I kind of picked, and, you know, I've been a diehard fan for 24 years now. So That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff Garcia, so that, that goes back. Huh? It goes back, oh, yeah. So it was two, in 2000. You know, I was doing the math. I was like, wow, I've been a fan for 24 years, and I still haven't seen the Super Bowl. But, you know, I'm a diehard. Damn, it's going to be another 24 <laughs> years. Um, <laughs> my this is a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's your favorite Niner player and why? Who's your favorite all-time Niner player now or before and why? Yeah, so there's there's a lot to choose from, right? Um, but I believe in like my area of watching football, like it's pretty tough between you know a couple. But I'm gonna have to say Frank Gore, uh, running back. Um, he's well, an all-time yeah. third uh, third in career rushing yards in the NFL. He was you know from Miami, third round pick. I think he tore his ACL right before he came. Wow. Niners yeah. took like a, a risk on him, but. He's literally the inconvenient truth, the epitome of a really good football player. You know, he puts his head down. He doesn't talk so much, but he just gets the job done. And, you know, he was in, like, I think he's, like, the, one of the oldest running backs that's, like, um, to play a game. So, you know, mad respect for Frank Cor. Um, I have a bunch of his jerseys. So he's probably my favorite uh, football player. Yeah, yeah, he was a great player, great player. Um, yeah, him running against the Rams, he did a lot of damage for many years. Um, like you say, very respected player. Yeah, yeah. Um, both those players aren't like the more common Niner uh, players, so it's pretty impressive that you're a fan when, um, you know, yeah, it's not Joe Montana and Jerry Rice or no, yeah. some of the easier uh, choices. But, I mean, like you say, it's hard to narrow it down to a couple of players when you have a lot of success over the years and yeah. the decades, yeah. For sure, yeah. I'm sure you guys feel the same way. It's, not, it's kind of really hard to pick one. Yeah, I always say, you know, let me choose one from each decade, yeah. right? Because it's, it's hard to narrow down. Plus, um, I mean, you know, the game evolves, players evolve, different type of players. Of you course. Know? My question is this. Your girlfriend, Bree, which is Sal's daughter, <laughs> yeah, is yeah, a yeah. Rams fan, and you're a Niners fan. Yeah. <laughs> Explain how that works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of like uh, it balances. We balance each other out. Let's just put it that way. Um, you know, we both love football, so that's a good thing. It brought us together. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was like our first day, you know, was we actually go and watch a football game. So that's something that we have in common. Um, whether it's a Rams win, Niners, it doesn't matter. As long as we're watching the game, you know, we're at a certain age now. Well, yes, of course, I'm a diehard Niner. She's a diehard Ram fan. 
But in the end, we're just, you know, we have respect for both teams. And, yeah, you know, it both brings, NFL fans, yeah. Yeah, and we, we bring, you know, it brings a family together. So I'm, I'm sure, you know, you guys mm-hmm. as a family support it. Um, so, yeah, so it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter if she's a Ram fan, if she's a Seahawks fan, you know. Uh, yeah, that's a good football. attitude, good perspective. To me, I love NFL first. Yeah. And then I have my team. But anyone who's loyal to their team. Of course. Good, yeah. yeah. My question is this. Now, did you guys all attend the NFC Championship game together? Sal, Bree, you, and somebody else, correct? Yes. Now, did you leave the game early on the elevator, escalator, <laughs> too? Or how'd you get home that day? Were you, when the car was quiet on the way home? I need to know this, because, I mean, uh, I was in the car, I don't know. It was brutal. It was really, <laughs> it was really quiet. Explain it. Like, were you just sitting in the back and they're celebrating? Or? I, was just, I was waiting for the 23, uh, 2023 season. <laughs> the next opportunity we were going to get. But, no, yeah, yeah it was, that was a brutal loss. Like, especially going into, like, that before, yeah. you know, we beat you guys week 18 to get into there. And then we ended up losing against you guys in the NFC Championship. So I was definitely bummed out. You know, mm-hmm. Rams fans screaming right by me. <laughs> it was the worst, yeah. probably one of the worst experiences. But I had to, like, swallow yeah, my yeah, tongue. Yeah. Now, now, you being a Muay Thai fighter, MMA fighter, were you just like, uh, <laughs> uh, um, uh, I can't let it out, okay? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's the thing about fighting, you know. You learn how to control your emotions. Yeah, you yeah definitely, yeah. Big environment, so definitely definitely held a couple now years. now explain how long you've been in muay thai mma you have a fa- i think you have brothers that are involved let the people know how long you've been doing that for yeah i've been doing it since i was you know just about as long as i've been a, a niner fan like 20 24 years um we've been competing for about you know 10 10 years i have two brothers uh one is professional my little brother wow. um, he's mm-hmm. like uh, nationally ranked as well um number three wow um, but it's like a family thing i have two brothers obviously um so we've been doing it for a long time, and we used to fight in the house. My mom put us in the sport, and, you know, it taught us, you know, discipline, you know, resilience, everything that comes with martial arts. Kind of molded us into the, you know, people that we are today and chose us do- towards that, like, right direction, you know, as opposed to, like, going down the wrong route. Sure. So, mm-hmm. you know, now we're all, you know, successful in our, you know, careers. So hopefully one day we plan to have a nice gym, you know, kind of mm-hmm. like Sal's. Barbershop. You know, That'd be cool. Business. Yeah, yeah. Once you have your own business, especially when you have passion that goes yeah, along with keep, it. Yeah. yeah, it's like a family business. It's like not even work. Yeah. It's so like you come from a family life. of champions, unlike your 49ers, because they don't <laughs> win in 30 years. So 24 years, you come, from, you come from a family of champions. <laughs> Let's give them a round of applause for the family of champions. That's great. But the Niners? No, no, no. You know what I'm saying? And like Chris, mm. you know what I'm saying? Mm. Niner fan. Uh. So your favorite Niner game was what you've ever witnessed was what life? Yeah, so I've been to a couple. Like I remember my first game I actually went to um, Julian Peterson. I don't know if you guys remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like a, he played linebacker. He I remember he played corner one game. We, he was a stud. Mm-hmm. He ended up throwing his like armband, and I ended up catching it for my first game ever. Wow, very mm. very cool experience. Um, but my favorite game obviously was going to be Week 18 against you know the Rams mm-hmm. 2022. When you guys had, I think, like a 17 point lead or something, something like that. Yeah, yeah 10, 17, 17, yeah, I think so. 10, 10 to 17. Going yeah, into the third quarter, and I was just so bummed. And then, mm-hmm. you know, me and Bree made our way down to the VIP <laughs> section. I was like, finish the game. You know, we saw that amazing comeback, and we we're like on the first, you know, first deck of that mm-hmm. VIP mm-hmm. level. So it was just, it was probably, I went through every single emotion that game because I knew we needed to win. Yeah, to make uh, the playoffs. Make yeah. The playoffs. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you guys, you know, weren't letting down. You guys, you know, had a good lead on us. So, yeah. you know, fortunate to kind of see that live. I was like, is every game like this? You know, and then obviously mm-hmm. the next game was the NFC Championship. Mm-hmm. And I realized, you know, football is just one game at a time. <laughs> but that was definitely an experience. One of my favorite games. Definitely going to hold dear to my heart. I still have videos um, in my phone that nice. I'll cherish for the rest of my life for sure. Now, you're a fitness trainer. Do you want the people to know where you train at to get yeah, business? So Let them people yeah, know. If you guys ever want to get some Muay Thai training, some fitness training, strength training, jujitsu. Uh, I'm the fitness director at UFC Jim Brea, so come try out one of my coaches. If you want to do kickboxing, come try me out. You know, I'll give you a free session on the house, tour of the gym. We got recovery center, we, you know, we got yoga, jiu-jitsu, kickboxing, youth program. So come check us out. Uh, my Instagram handle is going to be C Paez, C-P-A-E-Z-Z. Follow your boy. Thank you for joining us, Chris. Appreciate it, boy. Who's house? We're out of house. <laughs> My name is Robert Bristow, owner of Value Teen. As we've been here for about 20 years, I've been the new owner for about two and a half years. We're all about consistency, quality, and bang for your buck. We're located on Valley View and Lampson, 12385 Valley View Street. We open at 11, close at 9, seven days a week. Welcome.
Joining us, my boy Jim. You saw him at the, the past <laughs> Rams and Niner episode. He came back for round two to join us. Awesome. Thank you for having me back. Especially oh, yeah, now yeah. this game actually means something. Yes, wow. Yeah, it yeah. means something to you, too. Nah, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> it's like you mean something to me. Oh. A little bit. Oh. Sal, stop with him, Sal. So, oh, are, you guys, are you guys going to rest your starters or what? Yeah, I think, you What know, do you think about that? You guys should rest your starters or no? I think that's the balance, you know, between rust and rest, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But you can only play, what, 53 or oh, 46 guys. So, you, you can rest. I think we'll definitely rest McCaffrey for sure. Um, probably rest Kittle. You know, there's much more chance to get hurt at the line. Mm -hmm. And then I'm sure Ayuk and, uh, and uh, Debo are going to play for sure, you know, but... Other than that, I, I think maybe max a quarter and a half, two quarters. You don't want to be too rusty. Brock Purdy is at least going to play half the game, for sure, for sure. Being so young mm -hmm. and then really not a lot of experience post postseason, you really want to get him in the rhythm, be able to, you know, play um, into his style of game, you know what I mean, and get that rhythm and take that to the playoffs. Because it's a long time before we actually play the next game, which is almost three weeks. Yeah, yeah. You can't be sitting around for three weeks. You cannot duplicate gameplay you know, real exactly. in-game, mm -hmm. you know, situations, you know, mm -hmm. so you've got to have that going into yeah. the next game. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, what do, you, what do you guys feel? Like, are you going to start uh, Stafford? So I'll, go, I'll let you go first on that. Yeah, I say the Rams start Stafford and just continue to play like they, they have been playing. I don't think the Rams have the luxury of, mm -hmm. you know, resting anyone right now. I think that, um, you know, the chemistry and everything is, is working well for the Rams. And I think that, you know, um, Tyron Williams and, and – no, I think all, a lot of the Ram players want that right. work. What does Miss Stafford think about that? <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 her podcast, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Love, she's so, spicy. I love it. Yeah, I yeah. Love she it. shows that she cares. No, she does. She yeah. does care. Very yeah. passionate. Yeah. That's what we like. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But, Stafford, yeah. That's interesting. Um, he'll play. He'll play. He'll play. And everybody on defense is going to play, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, you might meet the conductor. Ooh, yeah. Kobe Turner. Yeah, you don't need to come down. Because he's going to look at yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to break that Aaron Donald record. So, in fact, Puka Nakua could break a record. Yeah. And then wow. also, Kobe Turner break that record. Against the Niners, too. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. two against the Niners, and then they kind of finish the season off that way. It could be interesting. So, the Rams uh, players, they have a lot to play for. And I think that, um, you know, anytime both Rams and, and Niners are on the field, it's going to be exciting. It's very exciting, especially. And I think sometimes more for us fans. Yeah, than yeah. Sometimes yeah, for the team, right? Yeah. yeah, he's in the NFL. Really, the, the 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 situation right now with the Rams being ranked in the top ten that that blew me away. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. think they had. Why? Because we started off three and six. You thought the season was yeah, over. Yes, we're washed up. We didn't say that. Everybody else said it. Oh. Me and Sal never yeah, said no, that. No, we never said that. We yeah. never said that. We said no. Chris, Chris. Yeah. 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 Chris said five and twelve. Yeah. Chris said five and twelve. Show up. That's why he didn't show up. Yeah, yeah, that's why he didn't show up. That I get it. Yeah, yeah. But you remember what Sal said the last game? You last time you heard what did Sal tell you? He said what was going to happen. Yeah, 11, 10 to 11 wins, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. He said the last, playoffs, last game and will then it be relevant. Good. Yeah. And I was like, no way it's going to be relevant. Mm -hmm. You guys already, you know, going into the season, it looked very shaky. They did. Stafford didn't look like he was going to be even playing the first five, six games. Yeah, that's true. Uh, mm -hmm. Aaron Donald did not look motivated, you know. So mm -hmm. and then nobody knew Cooper uh, or, no, uh, Puka, or, or Puka. Yeah. Nuku, mm -hmm. Who was this guy? Yeah. 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 No, I couldn't yeah. even pronounce his name for like five, first five, six weeks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right? I was like, Puka, what <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that yeah, yeah. blew me away in terms mm -hmm. of the, the way the Rams were able to, to you know, gather mm -hmm. everybody in and, and rally, you know yeah. what I mean? Because really that's what they had to do. They were missing a lot of mm -hmm. players, yeah. and so everybody had to um, step up, and mm -hmm. especially no draft picks, like really no high draft picks. Mm -hmm. What's your draft picks looking like next year, though? Well, it doesn't matter because we got <laughs> – look, we picking the fifth right, and sixth. It doesn't listen, matter. Listen, <laughs> Sal, hey, Sal, you know what I mean? Because yeah. Puka Nakua is a fifth rounder. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyrie Williams is a fifth rounder. Mm -hmm. Who else? Sixth rounder. People we never heard of. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Before, like, oh, you don't have no picks. And, fifth and, and sixth. Why, that's why everybody yes. wrote off the Rams mm -hmm. for a long time. Yes, because that's why they sold off the farm yes. to win yes. one year. Mm -hmm. But they've proven, you know, this year, uh, what's the GM Sneed? Yes, no, less that, need, less yeah. need that um, it, you, don't, you don't have to have first and second round picks to make a championship yeah, team. Me, yeah. and, that, and that was really surprising. You know, because in football, like really, mm -hmm. the first three rounds really are the only teams that matter. It's yeah. Minus Brock Purdy, Mister Irrelevant. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Nobody saw that. You did see, oh, yeah, guys. last year. Nobody knew. No, yeah, nobody yeah. knew who he was last year. Nobody knew who he was. I didn't either. I think I think one thing that the Rams and Niner fans can agree on this year uh -huh. is that it's either going to be Rams or Niners winning the Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, the winner will come from the NFC West. Mm -hmm. I believe that. 
Oh, Seattle's not going to make it? What if they... <laughs> no. No. Wait, I thought they were out of running. No, no, well, they're not, because if they if Green Bay... They loses, still have a shot. Green Bay loses, okay, so Seattle wins. Shot. Yeah, yes, outside shot. But, yeah. but I think Geno right. Smith's about to write back, though, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. It's about time. They said back. they wrote us off. We were about to write yeah, back. Yeah, he's going to write back yeah. now. Yeah. I think you, and they're dangerous. Yeah. You know, Pete Carroll, Nick, he's they're all these... That's what I said. NFC teams, I mean, they play well against each other. Yeah. So that would that would be a very scary team. I wouldn't want to see them, you know, and so... But I definitely do think that this game um, will be close in the first half, but I think it will run away with the Niners winning by at least eight points. Mm. Okay, you're supposed to say that. I mean, okay. Cool. That sounds good. That sounds good. Yeah. That sounds like a... Well, I think it's going to be closer, Mm -hmm. but I think that... um, I think the Rams... uh, I mean, the Rams are a lot better team than they were early in the season. And I think the Rams will probably, um, you know, probably capitalize on that. But it could go either way. But both of them, you know, it's really hard when you're both, you know, clinched in the playoffs. It's yeah, really right. tough to yeah. really stay focused. I mean, you're not going to jeopardize anybody, you know. True. True. So if the game is kind of, you know, close, you'll probably start, you know, resting some players, I think. Yeah. But also for the Niners fans, you know, it's a last home game of the season. They're going to want to show out a little bit, you know. Um, well, it's the Rams. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, have yeah. To. so I think he, there will be times where the coach will be like, okay, we should really pull some guy out, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Rams but it, yeah, the, but exactly you can't show too much because we're going to meet you guys two weeks later in the NFC Championship. Yeah, we're gonna, we'll so, be yeah. back. Yeah. So. I'm up top of this. Yeah, yeah, we'll be back. Yeah, yeah we'll be back. <laughs> Big shout out to Jim for joining us again. Big yeah. shout out to Chris for being our guest. This is always With always that being great, said, great who's house? Who's house? This week, Sal, the last NFL weekend of the year, um, yeah. there's a couple games of playoff implications. The, the main one is the uh, Dolphins versus the Bills. If the Dolphins win, they win the division, mm-hmm. and they head to the playoffs as a number two seed. Mm-hmm. If the Bills win, they get the playoffs. The Dolphins still make it. Mm-hmm. But if the Bills lose, yeah, Pittsburgh can make it. Um, a couple other teams. Mm-hmm. And that's crazy because we thought Pittsburgh was done. You know, mm-hmm. Mike Tomlin wins again, always mm-hmm. has a winning record. Um, what do you think about that? Who are you going for between the Bills and the uh, – I think – me personally, I think this was one of the most enjoyable NFL seasons with the parity being what it is. And, you know, a lot of teams have an opportunity to still qualify it. You know, with the last game of the season, I think it's great. Um, but I think Miami Dolphins, they're just, they're a big question mark. I think they're reeling in the wrong direction. You know, um, I think Buffalo Bills will beat them and take that division. Now, Sam, beginning of the year, the Eagles, you know, look good. Mm-hmm. They've lost like four of the last five games. So they lost. Yeah. You know what's crazy? Both Dallas and the Eagles have lost to the Arizona Cardinals. How mm-hmm. many games? How many teams? How many games have the Arizona Cardinals won? Three. They beat yeah. the Cowboys yeah. and the Eagles. Yeah. So, uh-huh. so what do you, I mean, what do you think about the Eagles? Are they like people? Like a lot of Ram fans, like we want to play the Eagles. We want to play the Eagles. What do you think about that in the playoffs? I look at every team the same way. I mean, it's not about who you're playing; it's about how you're playing. Yes. Not your opponent. And if you play your style of football, you know it shouldn't matter. You can't really pick and choose who you want to play. If you Ultimately, in the NFL, if you're going to go to the Super Bowl and be the champion, you're going to have to play whoever's in front of you. So, to me, it doesn't matter um, whether it's the Lions, Cowboys, or whoever. I think um, the Rams match up well with whoever. And to me, when you start picking players like that, I think it becomes a distraction. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the news wants to see it. I want to see it. The, the Lions? I want to see the Lions real bad because yeah. I think Jared Goff's going to get exposed by Sean McVay and Aaron mm-hmm. Donald's going to eat him up. I just think that everybody's like, no, I don't want to play the Lions. Mm-hmm. I just think, 
I can see Sean McVay is like, okay, let's do this, guys. We are, I know his strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. I want to see that. I think if they play the Lions, it'll be a primetime game on Monday night. Thoughts? If they, if, if, if they, the six. Well, I think there'd be so many backstories. Yeah. Which would be amazing. I mean, Stafford going back to you know, to his hometown. You know, again, I think Garrett. You know, I mean, Jared Goff would be another like second fiddle. Again, to Stafford, yeah, right, especially if Stafford beats him, yeah. But um, I just think Campbell, Dan Campbell, is too emotional. He still hasn't got over the last game, and you know you can't be thinking that way. You have to turn you know, the page. You have to just turn the page and move on. And when you get a team that starts, you know, like uh, when he was talking about uh, uh, control fury, yeah. and, I mean, that's high school stuff. You got to move on and just be ready. I mean, every team has suffered. You know, uh, like when the Rams played the Ravens, you know, people were talking about, you know, blocked in the back. And it's over. None yeah. of that matters. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. You just got to move on. And um, I do like the way the Rams never make excuses. Just, you know, take your wins, take your loss, and keep getting better. Yeah. So, but I would love to see it. But I think if they do, I think that um, I feel I would feel bad for Jared Goff. Because, I, too. <laughs> I mean, he's made a lot of strides and he's he's improved a lot. But I still see him making the same mistakes that he was making when he was with the Rams. And, um Sometimes that's just his makeup, you know. I don't – mentally, um, I just think that he lets things get to him too much. And I think that, you know, going up against his former coach who pretty much built him up and, and you know, helped him, you know, uh, call defenses and stuff, I think that, you know, I'd kind of feel bad for Goff if they failed. Um, so I'd rather play Dallas or whoever just because I like Goff. You like Goff? I'll, I'll, I'll always be a Goff fan, yeah. Even though, okay, so – Now, Goff's a Niner fan too. <laughs> oh, because he grew up in the Bay, yeah, right? Yeah, he grew up in the Bay. Um, so is McVay, really. The hottest teams going into the playoffs are who, Sal? In the NFC, who do you think is the hottest team going into the playoffs? AFC? NFC first. My NFC, I would say uh, Rams. I would say Rams, Niners. And then after Rams, Niners, that's what I'm saying. That's All these saying. other teams have yeah. question marks. Okay. Now in the AFC, who's the AFC, I'd say um, Baltimore and Cleveland. And isn't that funny? They. Mm -hmm. The, two, the four best teams going to the playoffs, Rams, Niners, they both play each other in the NFC West. Browns, mm -hmm. Ravens mm -hmm. play each other in the, in the AFC, mm -hmm. in the AFC mm -hmm. North. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. Now, those could be a match. It could be, the, it could be and they all played each other. We all yeah. played each other this year. My, off, my, my greatest Super Bowl I would want to see? Obviously, the Rams versus the Browns because the Rams came from the Browns. But, you know, that's just my opinion. Yeah, well, I would want the Rams to play the best, you know. And I think that uh, I, the Ravens, I, I want another shot at the Ravens, um, especially uh, Odell Beckham. I love Odell Beckham, but I was kind of disappointed when he said that the Ravens were the best team he yeah. ever played for. I mean, I think that's disrespectful. Yeah. I mean, you might think that you could say it to yourself, but you don't have to say it publicly. And he said it, you know, he doubled down again. And I think that... Um, you know, uh, you know the Rams are above that. The Rams aren't going to get into yeah. no, you know, war words like that with him. But um, I think that if the Rams were fortunate enough to go to the Super Bowl and then play the Browns, right? Everybody would say, "Oh, they beat a oh, Joe Flacco, who's an old quarterback." But um, the Rams already beat them in the regular season, yeah. and then also with the Ravens, the Rams took them in the overtime in bad weather and stuff. So the Rams pretty much would um, feel pretty comfortable and confident that they can compete with. You know, it's, okay, we're playing the Niners. We don't know if they're playing their stars or not, but if the Rams beat the Niners with their backups, oh, you beat us because of our backups. But if the Niners beat the Rams, oh, man, we beat you with our backups. So you, so we, you can't win, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I just want the game. I want the Rams. I think my – my my. I hope it happens. Mm -hmm. I hope the Rams win. 24-21 comes on to a field goal. 48-yard field goal to win, the, to win it. <laughs> I don't know about field goals. I, I, I want a field yeah, goal, Sal. I, I, I don't know I about field, field goals. goals. Yeah, and this, the extra points scare me now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just say go two-point conversion. <laughs> well, two-point conversion until the end. Well, I can't wait to watch this game. I'll be at uh, Niners <laughs> Enemy Territory. Yeah, that's right. Oh, Gallagher's. Fans. I'll be at Gallagher's in Long Beach. Look for me. I'm not hard to find. I'll probably be the only Rams fan there. Mm -hmm. And I have the guts to watch this game. Yeah, my nephew, uh, Jason's a bartender there. Jason, I'm going to come look for you. Yeah, Jason, like last fan. time. Yeah. So with yeah. that being said, another episode of Go to Ram Buzz Podcast. Thank you mm -hmm. to our sponsor, Value Tennis Pizza. Thank you, Rob. That was great. Thank you, Bakery. Mm -hmm. Thank you to our guests, Chris Paez, Jim Marid. Mm -hmm. I don't care if they're another fans or great guests. But mm -hmm. with that being said, whose house? Rams house. Whose house? Rams house. Rams house. Yeah, good energy. Yeah. Thank you.